Gold to fall below $1,000 an ounce, this according to Dr. Doom and famed economist Nouriel Roubini. Roubini made headlines this week with this statement, and we'll have Vince Lancy up next to get his thoughts. He's been gone for a while, but what a way to come back when Rubini makes a statement that gold will fall below $1,000 an ounce. Vince Lancy joins us again. Vince, <laughs> nice to be with you again. Thank you, Danielle. Nice to see you again. So Rubini, Vince, calling for $1,000 gold by 2015. That's nearly half the level it reached at its peak in 2011. Uh, it's important to note that Rubini also uh, was hating gold back in 2009 before it went parabolic, but he is also the man credited with, uh, with predicting the financial crisis. What are your thoughts about uh, Rubini calling for the end of the gold rush? Um, I think... I think um, Look, the man obviously has a great reputation. He called the uh, stock market collapse, and uh, he is uh, a legitimate academic. Uh, but with regards to gold, anyone who I think claims they know where it's going has been, many people have been made fools uh, trying to predict gold's price. Even Rabini himself, who got out in 2009 of his longs, missed another $200 or so in the market as it went parabolic. Uh, so for me, and this is with respect, for me to say that gold, that because he says gold's going down after it has gone down $250, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm suspicious. So let's look now at Rubini's uh, case for gold going lower. His first point is, if we're not going to have another financial crisis, why be in gold? That's, that's a valid point. Um, uh, Gold as a as as a true as a true hedge for financial crises um, uh, is actually a recent phenomenon. Uh, you know, it, it's in 2008 2009, as he states accurately. You know, gold took a hit along with other assets. I would say to you that there's nothing new there. In 1987, when the stock market crashed, the night before the U.S. stock market opened, gold was called to open limit up. When it actually did open, it opened limit down. Why would that happen? Well, because the hedge did its job and people had margin calls and had to liquidate. The point being that an ebbing tide sinks all boats. So the thing you're buying to hedge your financial crisis in the end ends up being the thing you have to liquidate so you can buy food. Uh, ask victims of the Weimar Republic hyperinflation when French families were crossing the border and buying whole houses worth of furniture for $20. That's an irrational sale. So while I'm not saying gold isn't at a price it deserves to be at, I am saying that uh, oftentimes financial products that are used as hedges against uh, calamity end up being the first thing sold during that calamity because cash becomes king. Vince, the second point he makes is that uh, in spite of quantitative easing continuing, inflation is falling rather than going up, which he says is not good news for gold, though the counter argument could be made that gold was up 70% in 1933 after 26% uh, deflation. Thoughts? Right. The, the, those, are, those are two situations that look at extremes. Before I answer that, I want to add one thing to the first point. Um, the structure of the market, and this is for all the conspiracy theorists out there, and this is where I agree with them. The structure of the market is keeps the price of gold down. And that is the fact that if you're a bank and you have $1,000 of gold on your balance sheet, you only get $500 worth of borrowing power from the Fed from it. So in a crisis when you need cash, you've got a $1,000 bar of gold that you're, you can only borrow $500 against. You're going to sell it to get that $1,000 back. So Basel III was going to make gold a tier one asset, meaning dollar for dollar, it is what it is. Basel III was delayed. That keeps a lid on the price of gold. It's an artificial construct that keeps the price of gold down. So Basel III would have been good news for gold. In fact, that was probably a reason for the run up to 1800. Everyone thought Basel III was going to be implemented. It did not happen because when you really look at what Basel III said, it, the capital requirements for the European banks would have made them all go under in a day. So Basel III was delayed indefinitely. From inflation, we lead into point number three, where he mentions interest rates, which are negative territory, are expected to go higher. Um, real interest rates are negative and they can only go higher. All right, real interest rates are negative and that is why gold is trading at 
That's just a fact. Negative real interest rates are a reason to buy gold. Point being is if, if inflation is at zero, and this, by the way, is the deflationary reason to own gold. If interest rates are at zero, as they basically are, and real interest rates are at zero or negative, then what you're looking at is zero opportunity cost in owning gold. That is what started the run up in gold years ago. Real interest rates were zero. There was no inflation. So the cost of owning gold as an opportunity was nil. Now, to respond to his comment that real interest rates can only go up, uh, that's true. Real interest rates can go from negative 0.5% to 2%. But while that happens, interest rates can go to 10%. So that's 8% inflation. So you can't ignore, uh, you can't ignore inflation when you're discussing gold, which is what he's factoring out. Vince's fourth point is that uh, with the recovering global economy, gold does not provide an income and other assets such as real estate and equities uh, provide greater returns. Uh, true, old story, no argument. Here's the story behind that. Gold was pushed as an inflationary hedge. Now, I've discussed this with you, I think, in the past as well. Uh, in, an infl in an economy that starts to turn around and you go from disinflation to reflation, you want to own stocks that provide dividends that sell their products overseas because those companies will be able to have uh, pricing power and raise the prices of things. So that's what makes gold non-competitive. If I were a bank and I had a portfolio of stocks that had dividends and I wanted my customers to buy those stocks, I would put out an analyst report. It would be legitimate and they would rotate out of stocks. I mean, out of gold, out of non-interest rate bearing uh, assets into something that uh, bears interest rates. But that's what the Fed's been doing for the last five years. They've been saying to you, if you save money, you're an idiot. We're going to punish you. So there's a tax on savers, right? And there's a and there's a ta and savers are people who put their money in gold as well. Savers, my money's in the bank account. I get. 0.5% interest. Well, you're an idiot because the Fed has told you that it's going to keep interest rates at zero. You should be in stocks yielding 5 to 7%. And his point is valid as a result of that. Fifth point now, Vince, is uh, definitely a topic we've covered extensively in the past, and that is countries will be forced to sell their gold uh, to cover their debt. I know we've discussed Cyprus, Italy, and Greece in the past. What are your thoughts on point number five? Uh, uh, there is a valid point. It's a manipulated point. I want to know who the buyer is. It basically comes down to uh, when the European Fed, I can't think of what their name is today, says to you, you must own uh, junk country bonds on your balance sheet and we'll give you 100 cents on a dollar guaranteed. And you must sell your gold uh, in order to secure that debt and sell it to us, as was done with uh, Portugal, or I'm sorry, Cyprus then I'm suspicious. Who's buying the gold? And Vince, you meant the ECB before. Yes. And finally, point six that he makes, if I have to really sum it up, is that Rubini states we're not returning to a gold standard and that will hurt gold. Yeah, uh, he, he takes a, sh a pot shot at the, uh, at the right wing libertarian types. And, and I don't disagree with him uh, when he talks about those people, but uh, to talk in absolutes, you know, all or none, is, I think, um, not thoughtful. For example, um, I, I'm no right-wing nut uh, and I'm no lefty, but uh, to say that we're not going back to a gold standard at all, I think is, is, is not thoughtful. Uh, forget the people saying it. There have been a lot of conspiracies over the last 10 years uh, spoken by people wearing tinfoil hats that have ended up being true. Now, Putting those people in their category aside, the world is going to de-dollarize. It's not happening now, but it's happening. The IMF is creating SDRs and they're slowly trying to get dollars out of people's hands and diversify against having too many eggs in one currency. And that would include commodities, a basket of com currencies and commodities, and gold will be a part of that. That's a partial gold standard. It's going to happen. When is it going to happen? Probably after Germany gets all its gold repatriated. Probably after the dollar is after the dollar is very strong, and then Bernanke presses the button to print more. But I think he's wrong to say we're not going to return to some form of a physical asset standard. Fiat money cannot stand alone. Vince, thanks for sharing your feedback with us, and uh, nice having you back. And glad to be back. And uh, uh, let's hope uh, Noriel's wrong. But if he's right, let's hope we're short. 
And on that note, thanks for watching this edition of Reset. You can email us at newsfeedback at or follow us on Twitter at Daniela Comboni. Thanks for watching.